In this video, we're gonna talk about a local basis for a point in a topological space, and we'll talk about first countable spaces. So as usual, let's let X be a set and T be a topology on that set. So X together with T is a topological space, and let's take an element, a little X in green here, that's an element of the set X. So a local basis at X, it's a collection of subsets in the topology. So it's a collection fancy B, and this little subscript X here indicates that uh, the collection of subsets has something to do with the point that we're talking about, X. Such that the following two things happen though. Sorry, I didn't mean for this down here to pop up yet. But uh, such that the following two things happen. Uh, if B, regular B, is an element of my collection, well then X is contained in B. In other words, each element in here is a neighborhood of X. And the second thing I want to have happen, if you took any open set in your topology that contains X, in other words, if you took any neighborhood of X from the topology, well then you should be able to find somebody Let's call it regular B again, from our collection that's contained inside of that neighborhood. So we should be able to shrink down in any neighborhood of X and always find an element of our, of our collection BX here that also contains X. So let's look at an example of a local basis for a particular point in a nice space that I think we're all familiar with. Let's look at the real line. So X is the real numbers. And let's just let T be the usual topology. So good old college algebra like parentheses indicates open and brackets on both sides indicates closed. Let's look at the point X equals zero. That's a nice point. So let's exhibit a local basis for X equals zero in the usual topology. Why don't I just take all these intervals of the form minus one over N to one over N, where again, the uh, parentheses on the ends indicate that I don't get those end points. So why is this a local basis? So let's walk through what's it like to check these two properties in order to show that B sub zero here, fancy B sub zero to be more specific, is a local basis. So why? And what we'll do is we'll verify number one and number two. And maybe what I'll do first is, a lot of the times in topology, sometimes you can draw a picture and kind of think about what the picture says and then try to put words to it. And I'll try to do that here. So number one, if you've got an element of your proposed local basis here, why is it so that your point X is contained in each one of the things in your collection? So if I draw a picture of, well, if I look at an interval like minus one over M to one over M, where M is a natural number, of course zero is right in between them. So zero would be in every single one of these guys. So from my picture, again, if B is an element of my collection B sub zero, well, then I know that B has the form minus one over M to one over M for some natural number. And I know that zero is a number that's between minus one over M and one over M, therefore zero is in B. So that's how we verify number one up here. Now we need to move on to number two, which is a little bit harder. If you took any open set in your topology that uh, contains your point X, how come you can find somebody from your subcollection B sub X that uh, is completely contained inside of you? And let's maybe look at that in a picture too. So number two, let's look in a picture. What if I took any arbitrary open set, maybe it looks something like this in blue. So the blue set, you know, it's the union of a couple things, but it contains zero. Why should I be able to find an interval minus one over n to one over n that fits inside of that blue set? Well, let's maybe talk about it in some steps. You know, what are some things that we know so far? I know that the real line with the usual topology, well, I know that that's like a, you know, a metric space. And so I know that the uh, open balls in that metric space form a basis for the topology. So what do I know? I know that I could find some real number r that serves as a radius, some positive real number r to serve as a radius, so that in yellow here, the ball centered at zero of radius r is completely contained in the blue set u. Remember, that's how we started off with open sets in a metric space. But now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna use a fact about the real numbers called the Archimedean property. If you give me any positive real number r, I can find you a natural number whose reciprocal is closer to zero than r is. And so what can I do then? I'll take a natural number n, I'll take its reciprocal and let that be my radius now. Well, I can make sure that I find a big enough natural number so that this ball of radius one over n fits completely inside the yellow. Maybe what do you notice? Well, the red ball fits inside the yellow, thus it fits inside the blue. So that's maybe the idea for how we'll try to find an element from our subcollection B sub zero uh, that contains X and is completely contained in U. So let's try to put some words to that. So let's let U be any open set that is a neighborhood of zero. I know from before that a basis for the topology, uh, for the usual topology, looks like these open balls of, and again, for right now, I'm, I'm saying that R is really any real positive number, any positive real number. I know that's a basis for the topology. Those are the building blocks. So in particular, I know that, well, for this arbitrary open set U, I can find you some real number so that the ball of radius R centered at zero fits inside of U. Now what we're gonna do is again, use that fact about the real numbers called the Archimedean property, if you've heard of that. 
give me a natural number that's big enough so that the reciprocal of one over n is smaller than r is. And so what do we get then? Well, the, I'll take b to be this interval from minus one over n to one over n, and what do you notice? Well, b is an element of my collection, b zero, right? It's got that form, ta-da. Uh, but what else do you notice? Well, that's the same thing as the ball centered at zero of radius one over n, as far as the real line's concerned. And so what have we got? Zero is in b, and this b here, b is completely contained inside of here, which is completely contained inside of here, completely contained inside of u. So b, I should say, this is the wrong symbol, that should be a subset symbol right there. You get the idea though. So thus we've shown that uh, we've got a local basis uh, at zero, and that's how you check those properties. Now what does that have to do with the other thing in the title of this video called being first countable? We'll say that a topological space xt is first countable if there's a countable local basis at each point in the space. So at each point in the space, if you can find a local basis that only has a countable amount of sets in it, then you're first countable and your space is first countable. So we'll look at an example of a first countable space and it turns out any metric space where X is the set and D is the metric, any metric space is first countable. So what am I assuming? I'm assuming if you're watching this, you're comfortable with the idea that a metric D, you know, it kind of naturally induces a topology, just like I looked at above, by just using the open balls centered at a point of a particular radius, uh, or of any radius really. Those form the building blocks of what are called uh, open sets in a metric space. So what we'll try to do is we'll try to show what would it look like to say that a metric space is first countable, what's a proof look like. We're going to use that fact I just got done talking about. I know that the collection of open balls fancy B, which again are a notation for it, X is the center and R is the radius, that those form a basis for the topology that are induced by D. Again, all of these open balls are the building blocks for anything that you want to call open in a metric space. So now what do we need to do? Well, according to the definition of first countable, I need to show that, you know, if you're given any arbitrary point in the space, you should be able to construct a countable local basis. And we're going to use an idea that we did in the previous example, where why don't I just use reciprocals of natural numbers as my radii? And so let's check that out. So let's let x be any arbitrary element of the metric space. Then I'm going to take b sub x, my proposed local basis, to be well, all the balls that are centered at x, but again of radius 1 over n, where n's a natural number. That's a local basis at x for reasons just like before in the previous video. But moreover, it's countable. And I tried to color in orange why it's countable. Like, what, what, how are these sets indexed? Well, they're indexed by natural numbers, and natural numbers are countable. So, in particular, just to spell that out a little bit more, you know, these balls, B, centered at X of radius 1 over N, are in 1 1 correspondence with the natural numbers. Again, because the natural numbers index this set. So, in that way, you can always do that for a metric space. Therefore, at any point, you can find a countable local basis, which means that the metric space is first countable. Now let's look at an example of a topological space that is not first countable. And so just like I said, okay, if we want a non-first countable space, then we need to venture into more abstract topological spaces, not just metric spaces. So let's take the real line, let's not get too wild, but let's take the topology to be the finite complement topology. And if you've never heard of that before, what is it? You're gonna take all the subsets of the real line such that the following, either U is the empty set, or the complement of u, so I'll write that as r minus u, the complement of u is finite. So in other words, think about you're on the real line, if you just pluck out a handful of points, and it's a finite number of points that you plucked off the real line, what you're left with is an open set. So that's how you should think about that. It turns out that this topological space is not first countable. So let's talk about why. What would it mean to not be first countable? And so uh, if we're not first countable, oops, I should go down here, then uh, what are we going to show? We're going to show that uh, we're going to show that in our case here, no point uh, in X has a countable basis. And so it would suffice to show that there exists a point that doesn't have a countable basis. But the finite complement topology is so bad in the sense that we'll show that no point in the space has a countable local basis. So what's a good way to do that? Well, suppose by way of contradiction that you had a point uh, that had a countable local basis. And we'll call it, same notation, b sub x, but let's call the elements that are in my countable local basis b sub n. When I say the word countable, that's reflected in the fact that, again, it's indexed by the natural numbers. So remember, too, now that each of these bn's is open, which means that each bn is either the empty set or the complement, uh, or the complement of bn is finite. So again, that's what it means for bn to be open. So now let's think about well, what goes on in the finite complement topology. <clears throat> if you take a point y that's distinct from x, what happens when you delete y from the real line? Well, x is still contained in here since y and x are not the same. 
And therefore, and also too, the complement of r minus y is one point, right? It's finite. So r minus y is open. Therefore, it's a neighborhood of x. It's an open set that contains x. So it's a neighborhood of x. By hypothesis then, if I've got a neighborhood of x here, you should be able to find somebody from your collection that fits inside that neighborhood and contains x as well. And that's exactly what I say in words down here. By hypothesis, you could find a specific natural number n so that x is in that set bn from up here. He's in one of these for sure, and bn is contained inside of this neighborhood of x. And again, that's you know part two from our definition of a local basis. We're able to use that right here. So in particular though, right, if bn is contained in the complement of y, that's the same thing as saying that y is not an element of bn, right? These two things are the same thing. Now I wanna kinda of zoom out and think about, what did we just do? We just showed that for each real number y that's in the complement of x, you could find somebody from your collection, some bn, such that y is not in bn. So in other words, there aren't very many real numbers y that are in all of the bn simultaneously, right? You know, given any real number y, I'll find you a bn that doesn't have y. I can always do that. So the question is then, what real number would be in all the bn simultaneously? There's only one. By the above logic, the only point that can be in all the bn simultaneously would be x. Another way to say that is the intersection of all the bn's, so the intersection of all the bn's is equal to the singleton x. This equation right here is gonna be important in a moment because we're gonna do a little substitution. Remember, we're angling towards a contradiction. So no contradictions yet, but so far this is pretty big. The intersection of all the things in my countable local basis is just the singleton x. So we're gonna use De Morgan's laws in a second, as I say. Consider the complement of x, so I'll write it as r minus x. Let's do a little substitution here. So instead of that singleton x, let's, let's uh, put that intersection in there. So that's the same thing as r minus that intersection, and now here is where De Morgan's laws are gonna help out. I know that the complement of a big intersection, or just of any intersection, is equal to the uh, union of the individual complements. And so the, to, to write that, this is what I mean by the union of the individual complements. Now we wanna focus on this for a moment. This union, right, is countable because I'm taking the union over, you know, a countable index, if you want to say it that way. And what am I taking the union of? So I've got a countable union. Each of these sets R minus BN, remember, like I said before, is finite because each BN is open. And if it's open in the finite complement topology, that means its complement, R minus BN, is finite. So what are we doing here? We're taking the countable union of finite sets. The result of that is countable. And now if you think about what have you got here, this side is countable. That means that when I delete one point from the real line, that's countable. And I think everybody knows that that's not true. The real line and you delete a point from it is still uncountable. So that's our contradiction. So our contradiction is that we've shown that deleting one point from the real line is countable, which is baloney. Thus, you can't find a real number that has a countable local basis with respect to the finite complement topology. And that means that the real numbers with the uh, finite complement topology uh, is not a first countable topological space.